All right, we will follow the agenda as it has been emailed to you and publicly noticed. I would like to remind everyone that this is a meeting of the GO team. Only members of the team may participate in the discussion. Any members of the public present are here to quietly observe. For members of the GO team, please identify yourself when you speak. I am pleased to call this meeting of the Finch Elementary's GO team to order at 3.48 p.m. Our first order of business is to roll, is to call roll. Is the secretary here? Okay, so Ms. Washington, would you mind stepping in for the secretary today? Okay, I got it. And will you, you take, thank you. So please find present when your name is called by the secretary, acting secretary, uh, Ms. Washington. Okay, uh, Dr. T uh, Tyra Hot and Spencer, I hear something. And do y'all hear that? That might be my ice maker, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm present. Okay, Miss Aisha Freeman. Okay, Mrs. Melinda Malone. Okay, I'm writing to Mrs. Terion Moody. Mrs. Natasha Smith Willis. Present. Mrs. C.G. Davis. Present. Mrs. Aaron Gore. Present. Ms. Tara Washington. Mr. Terry Lee. Present. And myself, Mrs. Wanda Washington, present. All right, this team will only be able to take official action if a quorum is present. And a quorum, I believe, is half the GO team plus one. Is that right, Ms. Jacoby? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Ms. Washington, based on the um, roll, are we cannot we cannot count Ms. Dr. Cotton? I mean, Dr. Spencer, is there a quorum present? So we need six. Ms. Moody no, just actually answered. You need five. Okay. Okay, let me see. I'm sorry, Ms. Moody is present now. Okay. Perfect. All right, all right. So we yes, have, we do have a quorum. Thank you. All right, so we have a quorum. So now we can proceed to our action items on our agenda. Okay, our first action item is the approval of the agenda. The agenda has been emailed to you as well it is, as it is on the website. So please review it. And let me know if you see that, that there needs to be any changes. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? I motion to approve the agenda. Wanda Washington. All right. Do I have a second? I second. C.G. Davis. Okay. All in favor, please say yes. Or raise your hand. I think I can look at see the pictures. Yes. Okay. All opposed, say no. Are there any abstentions? 
Okay, so we're in favor of the agenda being approved. All right, it passes. All right, now we're gonna move on to our approval of our previous minutes for December 1st, 2022. Those have also been emailed as well as they are on the website. So please take a moment to review those. And let me know of any corrections. If there are no further corrections, may I have a motion to approve the previous meeting's minutes? I motion to approve the previous meeting minutes. Okay. This is Terry right. with a second. Terry Lee Thank with a second. Thank you, Mr. Terry. All in favor say, raise your hand or say yes. All opposed say no. Okay, any abstentions? All right, so our previous minutes have been approved and it passes. Now we're gonna move on to the next action item, which is to fill the office of seat for cluster representative. Um, at our last meeting, um, we had to replace a staff member and CG Davis, thank you for being a part of the GO team. Um, however, that staff, meeting, uh, staff member also that we lost, she had a seat for the cluster rep. So we wanna open it up now to any nominations for the cluster representative. I would like to nominate Miss Erin Gore for cluster representative. I think it's very fitting because she has, um, I found out the other day she did her student teaching here at Finch. She is very much a Finch Eagle, has been from the start, and she is very ingrained in the Carver cluster and knows a lot of students, all of that. So I think that she should be our cluster representative. Erin Gore, do you accept that nomination? I do, thank you for nominating me, Dr. Spencer. <laughs> hey. <It's my> pleasure. <laughs> All right, all in favor, uh, do it, what, do, um, I'm sorry. Okay, um, can I have a motion that we make Erin Gore the cluster representative? I motion that Erin Gore- This is Terry Lee, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I motion that Erin Gore be our cluster representative for Finch Elementary School. Okay. This is Terry Lee, I second that motion. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand or say yes. Awesome. Yes. All Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? All right, pass it. All right, thank you so much, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Erin Gore, for taking on that um, role of the cluster representative. Excellent, that was, that was cool. All right, now we're going to move on to our review and approval of the strategic plan. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Tara, uh, to Dr. Um, Spencer. We did talk about our strategic plan at our last meeting and we ranked our priorities as well as we also talked about how we would um, alter it 
to include our STEM and STEAM signature initiative. So around that, right now, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Cotton. All right, yes, ma'am. So I am actually going to move forward and show you all what we discussed as a part of our strategic plan um, in our last meeting. And so our goals, our SMART goals remain the same until 2025. Of course, we wanna incre increase proficiency from 19 to 25%. Um, we want to increase proficiency on the reading, I'm sorry, milestones. We additionally, we want to increase math performance on Georgia milestones from 14% to 20%. And we also want to ensure that we meet that CCRPI student attendance goal from um, at 82%. We also discussed what our strategic priorities were, which we'll get into detail a little more um, when we come when we talk about budget. But I just want you all to take a few moments to look at those priorities and how they were um, adapted to include our signature program of STEAM and then our school strategies. And then if you guys, so we'll give you a few moments to look at the, the newest strategic plan. And if you guys are in, um, all right, if you guys are satisfied, then we will vote to approve and then move forward. So I'll give you a few moments to check, to look. Okay, Ms. Smith Willis, it's on you. You're on mute. Thank you. All right, so do I have a motion to approve the, the, the current strategic plan? I motion to move the, I'm sorry, to approve the current strategic plan. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Wanda Washington. Okay. All in favor, say yes. Or raise your hand. Yes. 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 This is more yes. Okay. All opposed, say no. Or, raise, or put your thumb down. <laughs> okay. All right, any abstentions? All right, awesome. So uh, the motion passes that our FINCH strategic plan has approved. So now we're going to move on now to our discussion items. First discussion items is the A6 review and I'm gonna turn that over now to Dr. Spencer. Okay, so I'm going to go through it very quickly. As you all know, um, the ACES review is just an opportunity for principals to share highlight strengths, um, talk about opportunities for improvement, and then next steps in terms of school improvement and making sure that we're just monitoring the process of continuous improvement. And so here you'll see a picture. This was yesterday um, with Dr. Heron, superintendent, and my associate superintendent, y'all know Tommy Usher. Um, but this is actually the award that was given to Finch Elementary School for exiting the state identified um, or federally identified failing schools list. And so I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that we got that award and it will be in the showcase up front for all to see. So I'll go through the ACES review very quickly because it has a lot of the data that we talked about in our last go team meeting, but I wanted to share it again because it's very important to know in terms of our budget development process. And so I will bring up my ACES slide. And again, I'm going to run through it very quickly um, just so you guys can have an idea of the things that I shared with um, the expanded cabinet. All right. And so we talked about uh, I'm sorry, hold on one second. 
I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so we talked about our signature programming, our goals and our goals. One thing is we have um, participated in professional learning centered around STEAM, um, but our opportunity is there is a need to create a strong vision of what STEAM looks like at Finch Elementary School, and then how we want to proceed with it as it being a part of the fabric of our day. In addition to that, we could uh, communicate a little more to our stakeholders what STEAM is and how, how it would be a benefit to Finch Elementary as our signature program. I also would like to share with you guys our recent data points. And so what you'll see over here is we have a pretty good take rate for attendance, meaning all of our teachers are pretty much taking attendance um, and taking attendance accurately. Um, our ADA is um, 90% um, and that is part of our continuous improvement plan to ensure that our students are attending school daily and so we're meeting that mark but we did follow fall a little short with our students who are um, chronically absent so in our continuous improvement plan our goal is to hit 75 right now we're currently at 68 and as you guys know we have care team we have student attendance committees that work to support this work so that we can ensure that our students are getting here um, our behavior has not changed much of course there has been um, you know small incidents along the way but i'm pretty proud about what our tier one um, behavior program is with pbis and incentivizing our students along the way so that they can continue to make good decisions all right so that's our behavior data are there any questions on this slide okay i'll move forward to our map data this is no secret we talked about this in our previous go team meeting commendations for us being able to move more students into proficient and distinguished so thank you so much especially to my staff members who are on the call good job we do know that we have an opportunity to make some improvements with our beginning level learners and so that will be much of our work this semester with ensuring that we're doing small group instruction to hit on those skills that our students need to move forward in addition to that what i um the data the point that I did not have last um, go team meeting was our reading fluency data and so there has been a uh, slight there's been a slight increase in our students in the K kindergarten and first grade um, when it comes to reading fluency but since we've gotten this data we put in some we've put some things in place to address reading fluency um, which looks like small groups to have a fluency center and making sure we're doing sight words and um, doing those um, fluency uh, increase in minutes as you uh, read. In addition to that, I and Ms. Smith Willis has um, championed the reading campaign uh, where we're asking students, we're begging students <laughs> to read books and take at least two AR quizzes by Friday um, and score 80%. And with that, we've been incentivizing. Um, and so Ms. Smith Willis has been very diligent in getting those students who um, are doing are earning the most AR points and logging those breaks to read minutes. All right. I also want to share with you guys some data on our HMH usage. Um, the goal for each platform, whether that's Read 180, System 44, or iRead, is always 15 minutes. And so we are really knocking it out of the ballpark in our average daily use. And the goal for weekly use is two days. And we have a problem area here. And I wouldn't call it a problem area, just a challenge. Um, our kindergartners be began I read in January, so they're just getting adjusted to using HMH. And so this will be up in no time. So I don't see it as a red flag. Okay. Um, also wanted to report out our subgroup data. Of course, you guys know we have um, black students as a subgroup uh, we have our economically disadvantaged um, students as a subgroup and then we also have our swd students as a subgroup and so we did as a subgroup see great um, gains with our black students um, and i know that sounds crazy because most of our students are black however it is considered a subgroup um, in addition to that, when you look and when you drill down into how our SWD students perform, we saw a slight decline in both math and reading. And so there's work to be done there and just ensuring that our students are exposed to grade level standards and giving them the scaffolds that they need to be successful. 
we definitely reported out on our SIP strategies and the things that we were do, uh, doing to address ELA, things that we were doing to address math, supporting the whole child and family engagement. And um, we are definitely on track for meeting our goals. We're um, implementing all of the action steps, some with more fidelity than others. However, we're giving our best efforts to meeting those um, goals. And so you'll see um, a lot of our um, action steps include instructional planning, um, calibrations on uh, classroom visits, doing weekly data meetings, things of that nature. And then um, I definitely want to hone in on our whole child and student support because we do know that student attendance is an area of concern for us. And so we have incentivized and uh, we've done the due diligence of making sure that we are taking care of our kids in the care team with wraparound services. But I did communicate with the superintendent and the expanded cabinet that this is a larger issue outside of just Finch Elementary School and we see these trends across the Carver cluster at Sylvan Middle School, Carver Early, Carver Steam. And so I've asked for our engagement team to um, strategize around um, making sure that our parents are aware of how important it is to ensure that our students are at school. Okay. And I changed my high priority need when I was talking to the superintendent and her expanded cabinet. So um, obviously I addressed what we needed academically, but um, going before the cabinet, I um, also just asked for more support with student attendance and getting our kids here every day. Okay. So in a nutshell, that was the ACES review. Are, is there any questions or are there any questions about ACES? All right. So with that, I will proceed with our other discussion points. So now we're going to go, we're going to get into go team budget development process. So we have our school strategic plan as our roadmap and we all have different roles, right? And so we have to make sure that we are looking at the data and we are using that data to make the most informed decisions so that we can make sure that we're using the money as best as possible to address our student needs. So in the process of developing our budget we're presently at step three last semester we ended the semester with reviewing and updating our strategic plan and ranking our strategic priorities yesterday or the day before yesterday <laughs> we had our principals workshop where we talked where we got our budgets and we're able to just kind of see what our allocations were we're at the point now where i share it with you all and then next our next meeting what we'll do is we'll talk about where we will the, the direction that we want to move with in the budget and then we'll have a review and we'll talk through any specific needs any specific challenges all of that okay um, there will be a couple of meetings um, in between now and when we solidify and stamp the budget as approved however um, this is just a process um, and we'll make sure that that budget is approved by March 17th okay so this is our first go team meeting in which I will provide an overview of our allocations to you. We're doing that, of course, because we have to make sure that how we're spending our money is aligned to how our plan is designed for achievement or our strategic plan is designed. And this will occur between now and February. So my role is just to design the budget, I'll propose operational changes, I'll flesh out any strategies that I think might be important to us meeting our goals. I'll talk to you about what our day-to-day -day operations are. Um, I'll serve as the expert <laughs> on the school and I'll make sure that I um, hire quality instructional support. You guys' role is to focus on the big picture the positions and resources, not the people that are enrolled. And you guys are responsible for ensuring that the budget is directly aligned to what our mission and vision says, and that it's directly aligned to our goals, our priorities, and it's allocated in the correct way. All right, so again, I want to share with you our strategic plan. Our goals are up top. And I also want to hone in on how we ranked our priorities in our last meeting. So the only thing that significantly changed with our strategic priorities is we included um, wording to address signature programming because we know that that's a new um, a new 
focus for us in the Carver cluster. And so we wanted to ensure that all students are exposed to STEAM and work to, and we want to work to obtain state certification by 2025. All right, so with our priorities and the things that we had in mind, I wanted to present to you guys the rationale as to why those priorities are ranked the way that they are and how it should align to our budget. So of course our first priority is that we want to focus on reading and math as a foundational skill and we want to ensure our students reach content mastery. And of course we want to do that because when our students have foundational skills in literacy and math, they are more successful in college and career and life and it's considered a key enabler for equity. Our students are our students are able to compete with other students across the state, across the nation, across the world. So we want to focus on reading and math as a foundational skill. Um, additionally, we want to ensure that our students are exposed to STEAM. Um, and the rationale for that is, of course, because it is the signature program for the Carver Cluster. However, STEAM also inspires inquiry and curiosity. It empowers students to ask thought-provoking questions. It promotes creativity and exploration. And our students are able to connect problem solving to real world solutions. In addition to that, another priority is improving teacher eff efficacy and growth mindedness. Um, and namely, teachers belief in their ability to handle their role as a teacher um, plays a key role in influencing important academic outcomes. So that is one of our priorities that we always talk about at school, setting goals and building teacher capacity. And so it shows itself in our strategic plan as well. Another priority that was listed in a strategic plan was improving leadership capacity and building opportunities. Um, and it's just important, just as important to build leadership capacity as teacher capacity because we have to have the ability to reflect on the way in which we lead. Um, and we have to ensure that we're developing more effective ways to get results. Um, we wanted to, as another school priority, build systems and resources to support the school's priorities. And this is namely because we want to ensure that our students are receiving maximized opportunities for achievement and remediation daily if needed. And we, they get remediation through those HMA, HMH platforms. Our last two priorities are centered around wellness and communication. Um, and so we want to inform and engage the school's families and communities. Uh, research shows that when parents are involved, students' behaviors are better. They have higher academic achievement and enhanced social skills. Of course, everybody knows that when a parent is more likely, when a parent is involved, the children, the child is more likely to do better in school. In addition to that, our last school priority is to in ensure that we create a safe and nurturing and caring culture for all students. Um, and this is important because we want to help to improve scholars' academic performance. We want to curtail bullying and reduce dropout rates. And more specifically, we want to be able to build character. Okay. So what I am about to go into is our ex Oh, she's trying to Oh, sorry. Right, is there a question? Okay. Yeah. I am going to go into our executive summary. Um, the budget represents an investment plan of our school students, employees, and the community as a whole. Its recommendations are tied directly to our strategic plan and our vision, our direction. Our proposed budget for the general operations of the school are reflected at $6,088,731. This investment plan or budget accommodates a student population that is projected to be 335 students, which has been an increase of 56 students from FY23. So I'm not sure if you guys know, but at the end of last year, we were projected at, for this year, we were projected at 297. Um, currently in the building, I have about 347 kids. Um, and so for next year, we are looking to see at least 335, which is an increase from the projection from last year. Not what we have actually, but our projection from last year. So yay to increase. <laughs> 
All right, so I wanna show you all our total school allocations. Um, this is important to know because money is, we, we use the SSF funding allocation source for um, Atlanta Public Schools. And what that does is it allows for us to um, put certain weights on money allocation for different grade levels, different types of students, um, different student needs, just to be able to address students um, in the way that they um, are needed to be supported. So what you'll see at the top is, of course, our school, our projected enrollment, and our total money that was earned. You'll see um, at the top our base for how each student, how much each student has earned. And then you'll also see our projected numbers for what we will have in kindergarten through fifth grade. You'll also see that kindergartners um, receive more money because that is a foundational grade. They are at the start of school and so they need a little additional support. And so they receive a little more money than our first and second graders. There is also more support, we don't have sixth and eighth grade, but there is more support at those transitional grade levels um, just so that they can be successful moving forward. We also receive a pot of money for poverty because the community, we, we work in a um, community with low socioeconomic status. Um, so we receive a, receive a pot of money for that. We also receive a pot of money for um, students who are identified as EIP students that need a little more extra support than when it comes to um, the gen ed setting. They get um, you know a little more support with reading and math, push in, pull out um, model. We receive money for our special education students. We don't have any, um, I need to check into that. We do have some identified gifted students, so I'm not sure if that's correct, but I will check into that. Um, we have a couple of students. There we go. We have a gifted supplement. They're identified here. We have 17 students that um, receive money for um, gifted. We also have two students that we um, serve for our ELL population and we receive funding for them. And we also see receive funding for being a small school. And so with those general allocations for our total school, we equal up to about $3 million. Now, in addition to that, we receive money to support programming, um, things where, uh, or also things that can help with remediation of skills for students. And so what you'll see at the top is we receive um, money for signature programming. So we receive money um, to ensure that we can roll out our signature program scene. Uh, we also receive money for turnaround. Now, at the beginning of the meeting, I stated that we were a we were we had exited the federally identified list for failing schools, which is true. We did exit, but in this current status, we are now identified as a previous CSI school. So what that means is we receive money, just not as much. So last year, we probably got around $700,000 for turnaround funds. This year, we received over 700,000, I'm sorry. This year, we've only gotten $343,000. Um, and so those funds support um, making sure that our students get extra support with reading, extra support with math, turnaround counselor, behavior specialist, things of that nature, okay? We also um, get money for Title I. Um, we get money for family engagement. Um, and we also receive money to support with field trips um, and district funded stipends, okay? And so to total those allotments or those earnings, we have about $2 million, over $2 million. And so that is what brings our total allocation to $6 million, over $6 million. Okay, I know that was a lot. However, <laughs> once we get into how what what we'll do with the money and our budget design, then we'll go into um, what that looks like and how it will um, play out in FY24. All right, 
In addition to that, we have what we call the CARES Fund. The CARES Fund is um, the, that money that was given to us um, from the federal government, which started, I think, around 2020 in response to COVID-19, the pandemic. Um, and so that is just um, extra money to help us um, remediate skills, provide different things for us. And I'll get into that on the next slide, but we have been allocated $172,456 for CARES Fund for the FY24 year. This will be the last year that we have CARES Fund funding. So this is the last time that we'll, we'll receive money like this. All right. And as I stated, this is how we can use CARES funding. We can use it for technology support. We can use it for mental and physical health. We can use it for supplemental learning. We can also use it, use it for professional development. We can use it to support at-risk students, and we can also use it to um, support continuity of core staff and services. So this is what's next. Right now we are in our Go Team budget allocation meeting. What we'll do next, well, what will happen in February is I am to meet with my associate superintendent um, and basically show him what um, I'm thinking about doing with a budget that aligns with the strategic plan. We have staffing conferences. Um, we'll also go to a cluster planning session where we'll talk about positions that can be shared um, just based off of um, people that may have lost money. So other principals may have lost money. They might need to share positions. And we'll talk about cluster alignment. So the things that I'm doing at Finch should align with the things that's happening at Sylvan Middle School, and that should align too with what's happening at Carver early and Carver Steam. We'll talk about program manager discussions. They'll um, discuss my budget with me and approve. And then we will come back to another Go Team meeting where we'll talk about how the money was used and what um, decisions were, were made based off of the allocations. Um, and in March, we will have our final Go Team meeting, which will um, be the budget approval for FY24. Okay. Are there any questions? I know I gave you a lot, but I want to give you all the opportunity to ask any questions. So the CARES fund, is it just a certain amount of years we received that or? Yeah, we received it for three years. It started in 2020. Yep. And so this will be the last year that we've gotten it. We've gotten the same amount, I think, for three years straight. Any other questions? All righty. Well, I want to move into our announcements and upcoming events. It looks a little differently. I didn't uh, follow the agenda very closely, so I'll make those changes on the PowerPoint, Ms. Smith-Willis. Um, so our next meeting, of course, is February 9th at 3.30. We do have a winter break uh, from February 20th to the 24th. So our students are out February 20th through the 24th, and then we have a professional learning day for our teachers on February 20th. And then I don't know if there was anything else that I needed to mention from the agenda, um, but those are the most pressing things that you will um, that are coming up in February. I also want to encourage you all, especially Miss Moody, Mr. Lee. Um, our website is updated pretty frequently with our upcoming events and what's happening from um, each day. So if you want to take a look at what our what what's happening at Finch, please go to our website and then you can look see what we got going on every day that's it for me miss smith willis all right well thank you um one additional announcement you should have received the email regarding your budget training we need to make sure we have that um done before you have to have that done in order to vote on the budget so if you can try to have that down have that done before the next meeting um i think the next meeting is february 9th 
So if you can have that done before then, that would be great. And that's in Ellis. So you should have received an email regarding that. If you have not, just reach out and we'll get you know in the get you in the right context so you can get the information. Um yeah, and that's it. So Oh, okay. Yeah, that, she said it's only five. It's a five minute video and 10 questions. And yes, you have to take the questions and pass it before you get credit for completing the training. So that's just don't do the video and think that's it. You have to do the whole thing in order to get the credit. Okay. So that, in, that comes to the end of our agenda. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn our meeting? Anybody? We just want to stay. <laughs> <Motion. I'm> most... <laughs> okay. Motion. Who was the first? Like to... Yeah, I, um, Gore could take the first motion. I'll do the second. Awesome, awesome. Okay, all in favor, say yes or your hand. Any opposing? Any abstentions? All right. Well, the motion passes to adjourn our meeting at, I believe it's 428 p.m. Thank you so much for being the most important part of the GO team. And we look forward to seeing you guys February 9th. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, guys. All I appreciate right. you all. Okay. All right. Bye. Good night, you all. Good night. Uh, Dr. Spencer, did you see the notes?